it's a little difficult to follow such amazing people and their stories. So I'm going to focus my presentation on 20 quick uh, snapshots of people who have inspired my life and my personal cinema. And these are people who have inspired not only my life, but so many other people's lives. And I asked them to share, most of them, to send me a photo of them doing something that they love. So please enjoy. Ramona Boss Browning. This wonderful man opened the youth drop-in programs and his home to hundreds of queer youth facing hate in rural and suburban communities across BC during a time when no one else would. He gave us hope for the love that was possible in their lives. With a great big bear hug, he never asked us to wait for things to get better. He made them better. Ramona introduced me to Murray and the late Peter Corn. A teacher and a bus driver, the foster parents to my very first gay date didn't last long. <laughs> they put everything on the line by suing the Ministry of Education for discrimination, and they won, our community won. The legacy is a better school curriculum that acknowledges queer existence and our contributions. I met James Chamberlain in 1997 when I was just coming out. An inspiring kindergarten teacher, he took the Sur Surrey School Board to the Supreme Court for banning kids' books depicting same-sex mom moms and dads. And he, we, won. Schools are becoming more inclusive because of James's leadership, and I'm proud to say that we now can call him Principal Chamberlain. When I immigrated to Canada at age nine, one of the first forms of discrimination I saw was against First Nations people. Much of my personal cinema was written in my teens. As a youth worker, Gil Larad helped introduce the idea of two-spirit people into the mainstream queer community and helped start two-spirit programs which respected First Nations traditions. As an elected school board trustee, Jane Bowie was the key to adopting a comprehensive LGBTQ policy that committed Vancouver to provide a safe and pro uh, positive learning environment for all. This leadership has led to many school districts following suit, despite a provincial government which still refuses to act even today. Jane is a fighter for equality. As a young gay man, it seemed politicians and the church were against me. But then I met Tim Stevenson, the first gay cabinet minister and church minister. Now a city councillor, he's also husband to Gary Patterson, the first openly gay moderator of the United Church. Who says there's no place for church or state in the bedroom? <laughs> I met Drew Dennis and Sheena Sargent when I was a youth worker. Youth wanted their generation lives on the big screen at Out on Screen. Drew inspired the young people to create their own films and screenings, and the tradition continues today. Sheena was at YouthCo inspiring young people to develop health and harm reduction programs. Her leadership has now found a home in Friends for Life. Lydia Lex transformational into a shy, quiet, from a shy, quiet woman at Gab Youth Drop-In to later becoming my outspoken, bold replacement as youth worker has inspired me. She now presents hundreds of diversity workshops across BC and works to share queer people, queer people of color's voice and stories in mainstream queer community, perspective too often missing. Libby Davies is the first female Canadian member of Parliament to reveal she was in a same-sex relationship, but her accomplishments go much further than this. Ms. Davies is an accomplished organizer. She speaks out for better housing to drug reform to sex work, and among so much more. She tackles difficult conversations with a heart of gold. Then there's Heather Kitchen, a former host of the Queer FM of Canada's first queer radio show for many years. Heather was always there with a tape recorder in hand, interviewing people like Libby, or at protests like the one against the Surrey School Board's bigoted banned books. We chanted, two, four, six, eight, how do you know your kids are straight? And Heather broadcast that, our message. Chris Morrissey, co-founder of the Lesbian and Gay Immigration Task Force, which successfully changed policy to allow Canadian gays and lesbians to bring their partners to Canada. Chris opened numerous closet doors in senior centers as the first queer seniors worker at Community. She met her partner, Bridget, while there were nuns in Chile. Now that's a movie I'd like to see. <laughs> I also met Sadie Keene at Community. Born in Georgia in the 40s at a time when race-based segregation was a white folks rule, she relates this experience to Canada's treatment of First Nations people. Sadie continues to challenge the establishment in BC, from health boards to city politics. Sadie speaks her truth to power. Indian and queer cinema needs more sheroes like Fatima Jaffer. A moment in her personal movie that inspires me was when some members of our queer community were stereotyping the brown community as the sole perpetrators of gay bashing. Fatima helped organize a rally and community dialogues to 
name and challenge racism in the community. Kyle Shaughnessy is aware of the racism and transphobia that happens in our community as well. He has organized many gatherings for young queer people, particularly transgender youth in the far reaches of this province, isolated alone to speak their truth. Kyle is an incredible spoken word artist and just celebrated his marriage a few weeks ago. Amber Dawn is no stranger to queer cinema. Amber helps bring women's sexuality to the forefront of the often male-dominated queer community. Amber pushes boundaries. For instance, I came across her coordinating a gay men's leadership program. She published books, created films, and live performance, keeping us all talking for a long time to come. Jen Sung commands the stage with the electric blue hair and powerful voice. She's no stranger to out on screen as well, um, as a out worker for the out on schools program. Her beautiful mind is always on the sides of justice and at work. Her wonderful creative creativity would be hard to find anyone to play her role. She's an original. Speaking of originals, there's Victoria Henry, a vegan, a high school friend, a queer youth worker, and then a roommate with her cat, Chairman Meow. She's now an organizer with Greenpeace. She recently climbed the outside of the Shard, the tallest building in Europe, to protest against Arctic drilling. In McLean's magazine, after all the royal baby news, you can read her story. Speaking of royals, Joan is refined, demure, and shy, as you can see. Our love for our community brought us together. She builds community by entertaining us, and she's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for local charities. I expect drag queens to be out loud and proud. Joni's all that, a bingo game and a cocktail too. <laughs> Mr. David C. Jones will have you howling with laughter, no matter what your age. From babies to the elderly, gay, straight, and especially fabulous, David makes the world a happier place. Through improv, theater, film, volunteering, he's a community builder and a leader. A hero of mine whose personal movie inspires with laughter. And finally, we have a new voice in my queer cinema, Kim Villahante. This emerging spoken word artist's passion for justice floors me. Born and raised in the Philippines, Kim is a recent immigrant with a flair for words. She, like those I've spoken of before, stands up for equality. These stories are part of my cinema. Who is your cinema? Thank you so much, and to all of you.